Hey guys, my name is Philip, and you can find me at Twitter at Let's Image. Today I'm going to show you really a couple cool techniques, uh, very simple techniques as well, how to create a certain, let's say, interesting or magic lighting environment in a forest image, as I have it here. And the techniques I'm using are very simple, it's just a little bit of layering here and there, and a little bit of blurring here and there, and that's actually it. So now we're going to jump right into Photoshop, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so the way to do it is you have your image, for example, this image of a uh, yeah, forest. The first thing I do is I copy the layer by pressing Command and J, just in case I'm going to mess it up, uh, that I always have my uh, layer safe. Now, here we go. Once I have done that, I'm going to choose my um, contrast tool, and I'm going to increase the contrast, something like that. I'm going to close that again. The next thing is I grab my curve tools, and I'm going to bring down the brightness a little bit, so that you can actually see a little bit more of the leaf material here in this very bright area. Once that is done, I'm going to create a new layer mask, uh, a new layer by pressing down here, the new layer symbol. I'm going to hit Command, Alt, Shift and E, which is copying everything which is visible beneath that new layer and copying it onto that new layer, like that. Once I have done that, I'm going to desaturate that layer by pressing Command, Shift and U, which is desaturating that layer, and I'm going to change the blend mode from Normal to Hard Light. And then I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, and Radial Blur. So when you're here, make sure that your blur method is set to zoom, quality best, and then choose an amount which is appropriate to your image. I'm going to have to play a little bit with that. I'm going to choose 21 for here just because I know it works. The center of this, this uh, blurring, basically, unfortunately, you don't get a real-time preview. So I put my center somewhere on the top of this image, and from there the light will radiate towards the sides. I'm going to hit OK, and depending on your hardware, you're going to have to wait a couple of minutes, or seconds at least, so my hardware is a little bit outdated, so I'm going to have to wait a minute, so just bear with me. Ah, nearly there. Cool, I like that. So that's the effect you get. You see the light is radiating from the center of our blur towards the outer edges. If you find this effect is too strong for you, there is no problem at all. Just go to your opacity here and reduce the opacity of that layer to your liking. So in this case, I'm going to bring it up to somewhere like 80%. Once I have done that, I'm going to go to Curves again. Make sure I'm just working on the layer beneath by using this little symbol here. I'm going to select my reds and crank my reds up a little bit. And then I go to blue, which is the opposing color. And bring them down a little bit. And it just does a very subtle effect, but you'll see hopefully you see that. Um, it is adding a little bit of yellow to the whole image and sort of creating this summery, summer-ish feeling, if you'd like. So that's basically the, the way how to get this kind of effect onto the image. Now you see we have this blurring effect or this um, radi or radiating light effect even on the ground and I obviously don't want it on the ground. So what you can do is you just select your layer where you just did the changes to, you create a layer mask by clicking on this little Japanese flag down here and you hit Command and I which is inverting what you did there you're going to select the brush using B, and then you change your opacity to whatever you feel like. I'm going to change it to about 40%, and just brush the effect through to the areas where I actually want it. And in this case, that is not the ground, that is the tree area, and wherever the light is. Especially in the top part, that's where the effect is actually going to be really cool and really visible. Okay. That is nice. So now the ground is nice and normal. Whereas the canopy sort of goes crazy. Yeah, I like that. Now, if you have ever seen a color wheel, a color wheel is basically showing you which colors go together by yeah, showing you which colors are in a ring opposing each other. And these colors normally go very well together. And if you check these color wheels, you'll see that together with green, red is yeah, a good choice. And we have this sort of subtly red area down here in the path. So a nice way, at least for this image where there is a little bit of red already, I would just grab my curve tool if I wanted to add anything, go to red and increase my reds a little bit. Ah, make sure you're working actually on all the layers because our our uh, ground is basically at this image down here below. So I'm gonna just do that, crank up the reds a little bit, not too much, something like that. And I don't want this red everywhere, so I'm hitting Command and I, and I'm gonna select where I want this effect to be visible, and I want it to be visible here at the sides just to get a little bit more red in that. Now obviously you can play with these kind of things as much as you want. You can increase the effect, you can do the effect again, which would make it obviously more visible. 
uh, you, you can do that or not. That is completely up to you. In a, in a second, I'm going to show you my final image. And uh, yeah, so that's basically all you have to do to create a little bit of light magic if you want in an otherwise boring forest image. Cool, so here you can see my final version. Uh, for this image I used a couple of yeah, different techniques, so not just purely the lighting, but I uh, basically used what was that, clone stamping as well to increase the length of the path a little bit. I used a thing called Puppet Warp to um, actually um, bend the trees on the left side a little bit more and a couple of different things, but the main thing obviously is the lighting and that's the technique I just showed you. So go out there, take some really cool forest images and apply the technique and see if it works for you. If you like it, then please leave me a comment below and don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Let's Image. Thanks guys and I'll see you the next time. Bye bye.